Hi, this is Don Clark with FileMakerProGurus.com and FM Database Consulting. I'm with Susan Finema of Beyond the Chaos. Susan, how are you today? Hey, Don. I'm great. Great to talk to you again. I'm actually sad this is our last in the series. Yes, it is. This is the third in our project management series. Um, and what we're going to be covering today is, is how you as a developer can do the things that are required of you. Uh, how can you keep yourself on track? So with that, we'll go over to Susan again, because she's the one who has a lot more experience in these matters than I do. So I, I want to learn. <laughs> Help me out here. All right. So you want to know the number one thing you can do to help keep your track, yourself on track? What's that? Figure out how to say no. Ah. If you have too many demands, no, if, I won't do that. <laughs> 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 you can, you can learn, there you go. You can learn how to say it nicely. Yes. Um, you know, no can come in the form of, hey, I'm happy to do that for you, but it needs to be next week yeah. or it needs to be next month. <laughs> you and, know, and that's the way you can do that. And this is a trick I learned, by the way, in, in, in negotiation tactics is, is ask somebody for help. How can I do that? I have too much on my plate already. So how can how can we have, make these things happen? That uh, works great if it's yeah. all if all of your priorities are with one person. Right, exactly. If you're if you're subcontracting and it's it's 40 hours a week and it's all one one client, the project manager can absolutely help you prioritize. That's exactly. a great tip. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, if you're spread between different clients, that might not work as easily. Oh, um, no. It, it's yeah. a, you can't say I have to, you know, responsibility to somebody else. They're going to say, well, I'm more important. You well, to, you know, don't, I don't care about your responsibilities with somebody else, but that's off track. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and back to what we talked about last week, right? Yeah. Making sure that you just meet what you've promised right. to each client. And to that end, you're always under promise and always over deliver. You'll be in demand if you're a developer. If you do that thing alone, you will be in demand. Okay. Um, if you can just, just schedule your time. Yeah. You know, one thing that, one thing I think a lot of uh, developers don't do is realize that they have their own systems and, and work that they have to coordinate to make things happen. They have to send out invoices. They have to do timesheets. And there's a lot of things to remember. So don't ever be afraid to get a free Basecamp 3 account and make your own operations project and keep track of some of those things there. Oh, okay. I didn't know that was available. Yeah, yeah. You get one free project with uh, Basecamp 3. So you can always do that. You know, log in as the same account as you're mm -hmm. using on other base camps, the same email address, and you'll right. be able to uh, set up your own. Um, so use that project management system to work for you too, even okay. if you're being pulled in eight different directions by eight different uh, contractors. Which is constant, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the other is take 10 minutes at the end of every day and look, look at what you have to do tomorrow so that the next day you're not arriving at start time without having anything prepared. Instead of starting, you're figuring out what to do. You're right? playing your next, you're playing your day at the end of the, the, that day. And that you should look over your calendar. You should look at your list of things just so you're, it's the top of your mind. If, if that's all you did, you'd be way farther ahead. Yeah. And you know what? Do your timesheets during that 10 minutes too. <laughs> Cut those up. Yeah. It is impossible to remember at the end of the week what you did all week, right? Do, don't, you, don't you recommend that they do their timesheets after each project? I, I absolutely do, but minimally at the end of every okay. day. Right. Many, uh, many project management tools or time tracking tools even allow you to track it as you work, right. um, right. you know, by hitting a timer button. And I absolutely recommend using that. Okay. Um, but if you can't, or if you don't work well that way, or you forget, you know, the end of the day, at least the end of the week is too late. You won't remember anything. Oh, you won't remember a thing. What did I yeah. do on Tuesday at three o'clock? You know? <laughs> I don't know. Because I wrote it down, you know. <laughs> so, absolutely. Which, program was I working on, or which, which project was I working on? 
you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer too in calendaring in blocking your calendar out of what project you're working on. Um, are you spending time developing? Are you spending time invoicing? Um, do you have to go pick up your kids at school? Put that on your calendar and block the time out. If it happens every day at the same time, do it. You're going now, to the gym. You know, right. You're going to go do work out. Put it on the calendar. You'll, you'll go to the gym more often. <laughs> I, actually, I actually wrote a blog post about that uh, in December. And so if you go on my site, beyondthechaos.biz slash blog, you should find it there. And it was in something about managing your virtual business. Okay. And there are a lot of tips in there about how uh, to keep yourself on track with all the other distractions. But the first and foremost is calendar out those things that you're not going to change. If you're going to go to your kid's soccer game, put it on your calendar. Right. It's a great way to set that expectation. And then also to make sure that you're coding and doing the really hard thinking work during the times that you are the best. Yeah, if you're a morning person, schedule that in the morning. If you're an afternoon person, do it yet then. So right, exactly. um, you know, turn off your phone, turn off your email, turn off your Slack. That's oh. tough to do, but you know, really, if if you have that luxury to do that, if you don't have fires to put out, um, I, I, I wear a lot of hats in my business, so I'll yeah. turn off my phone. And somebody has a production system that costs them money when it goes down and they need me or my, or me or me as a project manager to contact my subcontractor or my developer, then I have to be able to be somewhere where I can at least get the message somehow. And that's a little bit distracting, but it's a necessary part of what I do. But if you're a coder and you're deep in your code, the last thing you want to have happen is the phone ring. Right. And or ding, here comes a message or ding, here comes an email or something like that. And you, you know, when you, you've reached down to the sixth level of logic and you got this thing just about cracked and all of a sudden you, you lose can lose, you, you can lose a half hour of work just yeah. by having your mind distracted, yeah. you know, and, and there are tools on your phones and things like that to let specific numbers through and not others. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to investigate those. True. And really other than a server going down, who can't wait two hours for an answer? Really? Most of the people I know. Most people. <laughs> but if you, but again, if you start right. setting, if you set away. those expectations with them that it's not insta dawn, you know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I get dawn in two hours. That's usually acceptable. That's usually, it, it usually works that well. Most of the time people are reaching out to you, their message, you know, if they, if I want something like I'm doing here, we're, we're recording something live and the phone rings three or four times, I'm going to know that it's something I have to get to as soon as I'm done here. Right. And if, if you know, that means that there's something really, it's the same person calling, I mean, or something like that, because I'll at least be able to monitor that portion of it. And so I don't have to answer the phone every time they know I won't. But that, these are all <laughs> good tools that you, and you should structure your work day that way. You so know, you have things scheduled out, you're focused on what you want to get done, you're maximizing it, and then you're going to be able to raise your rates, as we talked about in an earlier video, because you're, you're, you're over delivering and under promising. Under promising. You know, the other thing that, that I would encourage is how can you avoid those phone calls? How can you avoid those interruption, interruptive emails, all those things in the first place, right? Is it that you set a regular status meeting with your client so that they're like, oh, I'm just going to talk to them on Thursdays. I don't need to interrupt them. Mm -hmm. um, those types of things actually work. And if you set up some of those expectations and use your project management tools properly, a lot of the times you can avoid those emergencies or the client freaking out about what's going on because they haven't heard from you. Right. So some of those things are absolutely suggestions I have to, to put those processes in place to prevent that so that and you I'll have calendar those too, you know, yeah. the time yeah. to write an email to my client for this project or that client or, or what have you, or make a phone call. Right. Whatever it is. Well, you know, I have to calendar when I am going to go and do social media posts even you know, that's part of your business and, and that kind of communication. So even as a subcontractor, you need to be in touch. You need to be running your subcontracting world as a business, not just as an employee of different companies. Oh, you are. If you're a subcontractor, you're running your own business. It's a business and it 
everything that that demands. Right, right. Including the financial part that everybody hates. (laughs) Marketing. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Yeah. So make sure you're making time for that. Even if you don't, even if you're in a high demand and you don't feel like you need to advertise, you still want to get, you want people to want you all the time. So well, just because you're busy now doesn't mean you'll be busy two months from now. If you're going to have something in the hopper for two months from now, you should be working on it now. That's absolutely true. And that's, that's a challenge. But if you make time and block time to do it, mm-hmm. you can, you can weather those fluctuations a lot easier. Okay. Um, you know, the other thing I think people can do is they can reach out to their project manager if they're using one. That's, the- that's what we're here for, you know, mm-hmm. and you know what, we're a lot better at saying no um, nicely probably <laughs> than developers are. I know, you know, developers want everything to, to work. Oh, and here comes my cat <laughs> making noise. Um, you know, when they're overwhelmed, when, when you're overwhelmed, you, we absolutely can help you sort out priorities. Right. Um, if the client's not getting you things so that you can keep going, mm-hmm. you can, they, we could get you extended deadline. You know, just because the deadline's Friday doesn't mean that's the end all end all. We can help negotiate those things. Right. And a lot of those things are very hard for a developer to do. Right. It's not your world. And that's right. it, it is not ours. Not cool. That's why they develop for a living. Right. So ask, ask for help. You know, if the client asks for something that's not in scope, man, I can always get more money and more time for that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, minimally more time. Um, yeah. but not if you're just saying yes and doing it, right? Yeah. You have to make sure that communication is there. The other thing that, uh, many project managers can do is actually test for you as a user to do user okay. testing. Good point. Yeah. So don't be afraid to ask your project manager for help. That's what we're here for is to facilitate the project and to help you get the work done. I had never thought about doing that. I mean, yeah. but I do it for my subcontractors. I, I test it. I have it, a vested interest in it. I mean, especially if you have a non-technical project manager like I am or like my project manager, Laura, is, it's absolutely perfect for user testing, right? We don't know what the back end's supposed to do. Right. We know how FileMaker works, but we don't know how the back end, yeah. we don't know any of that. We don't and care. We don't know what they've done. So you can't, the you, you, biggest problem with developers is we, we see it from a preconceived point of view. We know what it's supposed to do. We're already trained in the system. Users right. break it all the time. <laughs> yeah, because you know what? Just because they don't go into the same area with the same preconceptions. Right, and we want it to be intuitive. So if I can't figure out how to create an invoice, and that's my whole job here, uh, you know, <laughs> we might have to look at a little bit of redesign. But at least uh, having that input up front uh, can help avoid some problems. You're still going to have users that do things that you could never imagine. But <laughs> having yeah, all the time that, that we all know that one. So, yeah. yeah. Having a PM look at it can really help get things yeah. a lot more firm before they're handed off to the client. Well, I think that covers everything unless I've missed something. So tell me, did I, miss I, I, I think we've shared a lot. <laughs> we've shared a lot of really good information. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching, following along and, and uh, look for your feedback. Um, this is the last of our current simply planned series of videos, and there may be more in the future. We don't know yet. So yeah. at any rate, this is Don Clark with FileMakerProGurus.com and uh, Susan Finema. I'm the Chaos Eradicating Officer for Beyond the Chaos. All right. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for Take listening. Care. Bye-bye.